Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. We're here today on the autopsy set for another in our fabulous series of equipment autopsies. Today we're taking apart a DeWalt sander. Now I don't know, this is a, a model DW411 palm grip sander and it died. As is often the case around the lab, we simply wore it out. Let's see if I get lucky and just magically happen to have a Torx bit that fits it because that'd just be magical. Ooh, I, you know what I got? You know what I got? I bet that does. Ha! I rule. I would like to thank everybody who's donated autopsy tools that made that possible because it's, it's nice to be able to reach back there and have the right tool for something. So let's find out how it died and learn more about it. Ooh, you know what we should do? Before I take it apart, let's plug it in and see what it does. We've had this sander since the Geek House project, the first Geek House pro Well, I can't plug it in because somebody cut the cord off. It must have been really angry. Well, they cut the cord off, Corey. Yep. I think that means I ought never, ever, ever plug it in. Yep. So I'm going to strip this off <laughs> and plug it in. <laughs> Kids, don't try this at home. Yeah, come to <laughs> that's a that's a good idea. Don't try this at home. Come to the geek group and try it here. Need the other end of my Gerber for this. This is really nice power cord too. It's all silicone. Hey, I like Dewalt tools. They could be a sponsor. The amount of money I've spent on Dewalt tools, I should own stock in them. Okay, now I need something that'll let me be a little bit away because I don't want to be holding it. Oh, hey, these will work. Will these work? These will totally work. Yeah, okay, now watch this. I got a plug. I got, I got a plug, a probe, and some zip ties. They're fabulous pink zip ties, which tells me they're probably Corey's. Okay, now you'll see these have banana jacks on them little expandy jacks. So what I'm going to do is I'll just zip tie this whole assembly together like this. Make sure those out there. I'll zip tie that down tight. I'll put two on here for safety. They go. Oh, here they are. Okay. And we'll just wrap these around here like that. I don't know if I can do that. This might work. Probably won't. Give it a shot. That's not going to work. There's no way this works. Okay, maybe it works a little. It might work. I'll give it a shot. Never, for the love of God, ever tried this at home. This is crazy dangerous. You do a lot with a determined attitude and zip ties and duct tape. <laughs> All right. This is in no way safe. You could die just watching me do this. There's my mechanical connection with two zip ties. That is so ghetto. And actually, they're, they're held pretty far apart. That should be... It should be fine, as long as they don't touch the giant stainless steel table in front of me. So for safety, I'll set them on my laptop. Now here's an important thing to know. Assuming everything was done properly in the wiring of your house and the extension cord, if you look in the end of an American socket, you have 
a little hole on the bottom, the half circle hole. You have the longer of the two vertical holes and then the shorter of the two vertical holes. The little one on the bottom should be ground. You have to test to be sure because people are dumb and weird things happen. The big hole should be neutral and the little hole should be hot. So I'll push that in there and it'll promptly fall right out. I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to turn it upside down. Set on a thing. It's going to move no matter what I do. And we'll just stick these in here. It's dead, dead. It doesn't matter if it's reversed or not, it should work. Yeah, I've got, no, I got black to hot. Yep, it's dead, dead. All right. Well, we tried. All that for nothing. And I'm just going to cut this off and we'll save that for later. In case we need it for something. That goes with tools. Okay. And we'll cut the cord off on this end and get that out of the way. Okay. Keeping that tape. Now we need this tool and not these. There we go. So let's dig into this. If you're working on your own tool, for future reference, the size Torx for these is a T20. Oh, wow. Well, that was obviously used for drywall sanding a lot. But we need to go down a size. Just going to grab the whole set. What size are you? Smaller than that. About there. Yay! Now as we look inside, this is the mount that holds the cord. This is the strain relief. And the purpose of a strain relief is so that as, because this is going to be moved a lot and the cord always flexes right here, it, the idea is instead of having a sharp point for the cord to flex on, like, like if it just came out of the side of the thing, the cord would flex very sharply all the time and the cord will quickly break there and it'll fail and you'll need a new cord. So what they do, is they put this long tube on it, and this tube makes that radius longer, and it's really thick. And the, the, the normal cord's still in there, and the cord is held in place up here by this clamp. So that's, that's forever there. And then this big strain relief just sets in this groove right here, and that lets the, the force of the bend, it, it increases the radius, and it distributes the force of bending the cord over this whole space so that the cord doesn't wear out so fast. It can still wear out if you sit there and flex it and stuff, but odds are the cord will last longer than the tool as it did in this one. So we can see our cord comes in and goes down to the motor here. That's our neutral. And then our hot feed comes around all the way around. It lays in these little grooves. It goes to the switch here. Then it'll come out the other side of the switch. And here's the switch and it goes down to the motor up there, and that comes out of the motor here, over to here, and then out the coil. So what we're doing is we're feeding two brushes and the coil. So we'll talk about that in a second, because it may be that the brushes are bad. Though the amount of gunge, look what I found. This is kind of neat. Let me get in there. Right down here, you can see that's one of the brushes. And there's a big fuzzy thing right there. Now that might have killed it. I'd have to strip this out and test everything to be sure, but that, that might be what actually killed it was the, the futs under the brushes. The brushes appear to be intact because they're still very long. You can see the, the travel on them. 
that that adjusts all the way down in there, and they're they're still way out at the end. So the brushes are probably still good. We'll cut this out. No, I'm going to leave that intact because I want to show you how it works. Now, if you look right here on this Wikipedia article, you can see a thing on electric motors, and you can do a little reading and learn how electric motors work. Now, there's a lot of different variations of electric motors. Some of them, especially DC motors, use permanent magnets to give a field winding, or give the effect of a field winding. They, they use permanent magnets to create the magnetic field around the armature. Some motors, mostly AC, use an electromagnet. And there's coils of wire wrapped into the housing of the motor. And that gives you your field winding. And the field winding works against the armature of the motor. Come here. There we go. Yep. And the field winding works against the armature of the motor, and that's what makes the motor turn. I think we've got the sides apart enough. We can split the case. No, I got two screws in the bottom. I got four screws in the bottom. I shouldn't have taken those screws apart. Yeah, I'll take them off. Let's see what we get. See, it would be really cool is if this is a random orbital sander. I want to take one of those apart pretty bad. This is the first time I've ever had a chance to do so. I don't think this is a random orbital sander, though. I think this is just a, a little palm sander. I think it's neat that it's had so much use that the pad is all worn down on the edge. We got all the screws out. What are we holding here? Okay, that takes the pad off. And now we can see the vents here where it sucks the dust out. That can go back in there because that's not doing anything. I think this is where we just split the case. It's acting like there's something holding it. I wonder if there's something under the sticker, but I don't think so. No, there's no spots. I just got to lever it a bit. It's acting like something's holding it. Somewhere there's a DeWalt service tech going, no, you idiot, it's oh, oh, okay, that's it. I gotta pull that out. And that, now will you move? Nope, because I gotta pull the electrical connections. Oops. <laughs> the electrical connections extend up into the housing a bit. so much gunge in here. It's really well built. Somebody put it together, I can take it apart. I'm missing something and I don't know what it is. think. Maybe that's a bit. <laughs> it might kill me. I don't need a hammer. I need to knock that free. Send it back. Thank you. See, I think it comes out this way. And I think there's so much gunge in there. Hey, Corey. I'm getting a hammer. Oh, 
I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> Laptop's been through worse. Okay, now there's the bottom. There's so much dust. That's cool. And you can see as that turns, there's the motor, and there's this little eccentrically mounted bearing, and the bearing is what the pad mounts to. I lost the rest of the pad. I don't need that anyway. But that's, that's how it works. That's what gives it the orbital motion is that. And I can hold the bearing still, and the pad would just mount into there. So that's how it works, but I really want to show you the motor. And I found out why I can't get apart, because there's two hidden screws down on the bottom here that I didn't see before. Because I don't have the manual for this. I have to figure it out as we go. Now at this point, I bet it all comes apart easy. Look at that. There goes that piece. Now we're down to just the heart of it, just the motor. Still having the same problem as I had with the motor before. Why is that? Let's see if we can lever against that a bit. I could take this out, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't do anything but hold that bearing in. There's our bearing. Wow, that's got some serious gunge and abuse in there. This sander has had a difficult life. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that feels right. Come on. I think I got it. Victory! <laughs> okay, so here's the housing, which is this really heavy duty injected molded plastic. Look at the intricacy of that molding. That took work. All right, we've got this thing. Here, we'll pull that out of there. What is, okay. Now, here's where we get to talk about armatures and field windings and all that jazz. We'll throw that away, we don't need that. All right, now look at this. We've got two bearings. There's a bearing on this end and a bearing on this end, and the piece in the middle is called an armature. This is the shaft of the motor, or think of it like the, uh, the crankshaft in a gasoline engine. So this is the part that actually turns. And on this, there's a whole bunch of poles, and you can see that's a coil of wire, and it goes all the way over here, and then down in between, and it comes out at the bottom, and it goes back over here. So that's a coil of wire. And there's, there's that coil there, and there's one exactly opposite on this side. And there's a whole series of maybe a dozen coils of wire in here, and they're all stacked in pairs, and they make their way around. And the ends of each of these coils comes out here to these plates, and these are copper plates, and these copper plates are arranged in pairs so that when a set of contacts on either side make connection, it energizes individual coils in here. So as this turns, there's always two coils advanced just a little bit. So that's the armature and the armature windings. This is our field winding. And you can see on top where we've got our brushes, and these brushes communicate the electricity to the armature. So here, I'll, I'll fuss with these a second. Hang on. I'll show you guys how this all goes together. Okay. Now, the brushes are made out of uh, polished carbon or graphite, and they ride in there like that, and they make the connection. This is why if you look in, you'll see motors like this with brushes and everything from slot cars to all kinds of power tools like palm sanders. And if you look inside when the tool's on, you'll see a couple little blue sparks and that's right where the brushes are. It's a really easy to spot. Now that you know what you're looking for, this is really easy to spot. So here's what's happening. When they apply power to the motor, some of that power goes out here to these two windings and there's a big coil of wire there on that side. 
There's a big coil out here on this side. And these are the field windings. These generate an electromagnetic field that envelops the whole housing. And this field is carried around by these laminations here. This is steel, and these are laminated plates, and they make this whole thing into an electromagnet. Now, that magnetic field works in, in direct timing with the magnetic field inside that's carried in through the commutator. So some of the power goes to the field windings, and some of the power goes to the brushes. And what it does is it sets up two magnetic fields that are pushing off of each other. So you have a magne magnetic field here, a magnetic field on the armature inside, and those two fields are pushing against each other, and that makes the motor want to spin. So that's, that's everything about inside a palm sander, and now you know the basics of how alternating and opposing and conjoining and revolving electromagnetic fields make a motor work. You now know the basics of electric motors. So. This is a fun thing that you should try and build on your own. It is really easy to build a really simple electric motor out of just some wire and a couple nails and some old bits of wood and some tin foil. You can find plans for this kind of stuff online, and I'll have the guys look around and see if they can find something like that. I built one when I was a kid, when I was like 10. I built one just out of an old popular mechanics book, and it was really cool. It was a fun time. So you guys have fun. Keep exploring. Keep taking things apart, studying the basics of how our world works. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. See ya! This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.